Tuesday, February 6th, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. This next story is out of the DailyMail.com. I'd like to thank Paul for sharing this story with me this morning. It's dated today, February the 6th, so it just came out a few hours ago. It goes on to read, The ozone layer is not recovering over some of Earth's most highly populated areas, putting billions at risk to high UV exposure. For those of you that are new to this YouTube channel, one thing we do here during the summer months, it's a team effort. We have people positioned all around the globe and multiple locations in North America, coast to coast. We measure the UV on a daily basis all summer long. Around, we try to do it around peak UV, which is when the sun is at its highest point in the sky with respect to your location. Um, and that's around solar noon is what we call that. And that's when the UV should be the highest in your area. And as you can see here, this is a playlist of UV updates from last year. We did updates every day, weather permitting, unless it was extremely cloudy or raining. And in my area out here in the desert, we haven't seen much rain at all in months. So it wasn't much of a problem here. But we have readers in uh, North Europe, Mexico, um, we're looking for more. I need some from the UK and Australia. It would be awesome for uh, this summer when we start UV readings again on a daily basis. And we learned a lot from this team effort, and it definitely was a team effort. One thing that we hypothesized based off of our readings of daily UV, and we were measuring UVA, UVB, and there's two people on Team UV that were measuring UVC. A gentleman from Texas and a gentleman from Portland, Oregon. And UVC should not be detectable. But these guys were detecting UVC consistently on a daily basis. Our UVA and B readings are um, pretty much in the acceptable range, but on the high end. And the days that it was the highest, believe it or not, were days that it was partly cloudy. Guess where the highest UV reading came from? All summer long, taking UV readings, we have a team UV member by the name of Linda in Philadelphia. Excellent uh, UV reader. Recorded a UV of over 14 multiple times in Philadelphia. Generally, UV readings, as you go down the latitudes of Earth, the UV readings are the highest, closest to the equator. But we're finding that that's not the case anymore. And one thing that we hypothesized is exactly this, that the UV um, is fluctuating in different areas where it normally wouldn't be a 14, like in Philadelphia, because there are wandering breaches in the ozone layer. That was the only thing that we could come up with. And that's what this uh, article is alluding to, that the ozone is not recovering over some of Earth's most highly populated areas. And Philadelphia is very densely populated, um, and they actually had the highest reading of the entire season that we checked UV. We're going to start again this year. What we'll do is take UV readings on a daily basis, what I do is, once all the readings come in from around the world, I assemble a video of each unique reading from each unique location, and I just share the readings with you. And one thing I recommend when I do these videos, and I say it every day, use a non-toxic sunblock. This is the best brand as far as I'm concerned that you can use. It's called Badger, and it's not a toxic concoction you're putting on your skin. I mean, you could eat this and it wouldn't hurt you. So you want to be careful what you put on your skin because what you put on your skin goes into your body. Carry an umbrella. Believe it or not, umbrellas were initially invented for shade, not rain. So it is an excellent idea as this gentleman is doing. This is during uh, August of last year walking his son home from school and he's protecting his son from the intense sunlight the potentially harmful uv rays this photograph was sent in by a young lady from canada 
her newborn baby has a sunburn across the uh, toes of the child's foot. This didn't happen outside. This happened inside the home. She was taking a nap in her uh, baby chair, and her foot was by a window where the sunlight came through. And you can see clearly a line right here where the sun burnt the child's uh, toes, and there were some blisters here from the extreme UV. I mean, it's incredible. Another thing I've been noticing, and it seems to be more aggressive these past few months, and I have been randomly checking the UV, and it's much higher than, um, you know, what the stations are saying. Like the other day I checked it, and it was nearly 8, and my UV app sh uh, showed a 3. So it was considerably higher than than what was being averaged or even being measured. I, I don't know. But this is what the license plates are beginning to look like in our area out here. They're being absolutely burnt to a crisp. And this is a phenomenon that's occurring during the winter months. Here's another one here. I mean, you can't even read it. And that plate can't be that old because that's a fairly new style of license plate. It's unrecognizable. What you see here is a bush that faces north. This tree faces north. You can clearly see what happened here during sunset. This direction is east. Back here is west. And this is north. When the sun set, the sunlight only touched the part of the bush that's burnt and this half of the tree that's dead. You see that? The shrubs that were in the shade are fine. The tree, half of the tree was in the shade. It too was fine. The extreme UV during the summer months, and this occurred during the summer months, completely burnt to a crisp this bush and half of the neighbor's tree, which he ended up cutting down. This bush has not recovered, and it will probably never be the same. Another thing that we're noticing are white stop signs. The stop sign faces west. Generally, the ones that we're seeing face south, either south, east, or west. This particular one faces west. It's completely white. We're thinking that it's due to extreme UV, but we're not 100% certain on that. But it's apparently happening very quickly because in all reality, there is no stop sign here. That's a white sign. It's blank. So in theory, you could go right through the stop sign, even though it wouldn't be recommended, and there's no stop sign there. So that tells me that this happened very quickly because there's managers that make inspections routinely to make sure that signs aren't damaged or broken and things like that. This would be a obvious uh, candidate to be replaced, but it happened so quickly it's been like that for weeks, months now. It's a pure white stop sign. So technically, there's no stop sign there. And that's not the only example. There's many, many more. I have a whole folder of, of uh, images that people have sent me from all over the world. And it's not just happening in one place. It's happening all over the entire world. So this story that was shared with me today, and it's dated today, I highly concur with based off of our observations last year, and we did UV readings for over three and a half months, almost four months, and we'll be starting up again this year. I need to get the team members back together, and we're looking for new team members. Like I said, it would be great to have someone from Australia, the UK, and I need someone uh, from the Minnesota, possibly Michigan area. That's one part of the uh, U.S. that we haven't covered. We've got everywhere everywhere else covered pretty good. So we're going to be starting that up probably next month, taking daily UV readings, and it's for educational purposes. And we did learn, or at least we hypothesized, this very theory that the ozone has wandering breaches. Because some days, here, here's the reason why. Some days the UV will be different than others, and the visible conditions are exactly the same as they were the day before. Say, for instance, here. You know, the sky's blue one day and the temperature's 95 degrees. Check the UV, it's a 9.95. The next day, blue skies, 
95 degrees and the UV is, you know, 11.6. And we try to measure it at peak UV so that the readings will be consistent from day to day. And for it to change, it tells me that the UV um, is being influenced by a lack of ozone. Ozone, its chemical composition is O3. It's basically a uh, three-part oxygen molecule. More than likely, it's, it's, it's my theory that if Earth didn't have oceans and surface water in general, more than likely it wouldn't have an ozone layer. That's why most of the planets that we've studied do not have a protective ozone layer. They also do not have surface water and huge oceans on the surface like Earth. Take away the oceans, take away the surface water, and more than likely the ozone would disappear very, very quickly. So could it be something involved with the oceans and maybe a depleting ocean? Uh, what, what do they call that? The dissolvable oxygen? There are places in the ocean that the dissolvable oxygen is very, very low. Could those places be influencing the ozone? And then those breaches in the ozone, those weaker areas, are wandering around the globe, allowing in harmful UV, UV one day, and the next day it's not. And quite possibly, even for five, ten minutes at a time. You know, like with this child's foot, that probably happened very quickly. And it could have been from a temporary breach in the ozone. You know, I'm just hypothesizing here. I, I can't prove any of this other than the readings that we do have. They speak for themselves. You know, some days the UV's 14. Just so you know, 12 is considered extreme. So if it's a 14, then you definitely need to, uh, like I tell you in each video, carry an umbrella, carry portable shade, uh, Wear long sleeves, use non-toxic sunblock, and stay in the shade. Because this sunlight is no joke, and it's the UV. UV is very high, and it's a global phenomenon. It's not just happening in certain parts of the desert areas or, uh, you know, the equator. It's happening around the globe. So, big heads up. I do completely concur with this story. I do think the ozone has wandering breaches, and... We, on Earth, don't know exactly where they are unless we go out and measure the ozone, or measure the UV every day. And during the summer months, we do, and we're going to be starting that up next month. So if you're watching Team UV members, brush the dust off your equipment and get ready to roll. We'll be starting sometime mid-March. I've been checking, and the UV levels are, are high. They're more than twice of what uh, my app is showing, so... Let's get our equipment out, Team UV, and we'll start in March, maybe towards the end of March. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and if you're outside, definitely consider carrying portable shade. Wear long sleeves, protect yourself and those you love. Thanks for watching, and be safe out there.